What's up Spike Nation, it's Marcus here and today I'm bringing you a video on how you can create your own custom formulas and I will be showing you three steps that I use or three tools that I use to make my own custom formula but this video could be a little long so let's get right into it. So method number one is going to involve using the custom formula Google Doc sheet that we already started and you can find this inside the discord so if you go down in the discord to custom formulas hit custom formulas and hit Google Docs you'll see a page pops up and it gives you the link to the Google Doc so if you get inside the Google Docs you'll see we have all types of already programmed custom formulas that you can just edit so for example we have gap percent we have today's open today's high yesterday's open yesterday's high volume we have some 10 SMA, 20 SMA. Uh, we also have time of high of day, time of low of day. So an actual application of using this Google Doc custom formula sheet, let's say we want the morning, the afternoon high, right? And you don't really know how to program this. You're not even sure what's considered the afternoon high. Well, we have all the data right here. I'll go to afternoon high. I'll click on this. It'll pop up. And then I'll come up here in this bar, right? So let me get a little closer so you guys can see that. I'll copy that. And then after I copy it, we will, let's just say we had a template and we can just use our test template here. So we'll go, we'll go to the columns because this will be more likely a column you want to track. So I'll go to columns, I'll go to build your own code and I'll put this in and now you see it it just works so and you can adjust this let's say if I wanted it to be 11 to let's say 11 30 because I usually uh I well I, I think I consider the afternoon usually like 11 30 to um close to the end of the day so we can do we can do like this so this will give that middle of the day effect, right? And I'll just call it midday in Excel. Midday, midday high. So I just create a custom formula that's going to grab the midday high for me. And I just add that. And now it'll pull this data. You know, it'll be getting the max of this data. And that's just an example of how you would use it. You can use it for any of these. Um, close green. So if you wanted to close green on a day, once again, I'll come up here. I'll copy that. You guys can see what I'm looking at. And then you just come into Spike Eat. You come over here. Uh, you paste it in. Green close. And this will be a filter actually. So let's let's actually go stick this in the filter. Because if you're looking for something to close green, most likely you're gonna want a filter. So now we have a, a you can see it says daily zero. So the close of today is greater than the close of yesterday. And let's say I wanted to optimize this. So I just said, hey, I wanted to see just close green on the day. So I did open, right? So what I'm saying is the intraday um, actually had a green or it closed higher than when it opened on this one. And then uh, I can just add the filter to that. So you can use this sheet to start creating your own custom formulas and as a good reference point on what to edit. So this is the best way and the easiest way to get started. Method number two is going to reference using the build your own words. So if you're new to the platform, and you're wondering how do you get to reference the build your own words, you can use uh, as a newcomer, you'll start off at the app template and you can use this page and you can go down one of these templates and hit use template. Um, you can also, if you are familiar and you already have a couple of templates, you can just use the edit template or use template button on one of your templates, or you can also click data request, uh, create data requests. But I'm simply going to use my test template and I'll just use test template and I'll just put vid in here and you can just scroll down to the bottom and you'll get to customs and then you'll get to the build your own words. And you just click on build your own words. And this is what we're going to be using to reference. So down here where it says formula, you can click inside formula and you'll see you'll get an open 
and it'll open up all these different formulas. So we got gap percent, gap um, and, and dollar price value. You, you get a, you get a lot of different stuff. So you guys can go through this on your own and see if it has the formulas you like. But let's just say we want to create a filter because we're in the filter section right now. So let's say we want to have the R vowel of the 21 day greater than the R vowel of the 14 day. So in here, I can easily come down to R vowel, see 21 days there, and I can say the R vowel of the 21 day is greater than the 14 day R vowel. And you can see I can add my filter. Now there's another way to do this, right? I don't like doing it this way. I think it removes a lot of customability. That's just my personal opinion. It is rather simple and easy to do it this way, but the other way you can do is I can type in RVAL, I can click copy code. So you can see at the top of the screen, um, it says word 21 day relative volume, and then it says code and it has the syntax code. When you click copy code, you see it says copy to clipboard, right? You can go over here to build your own code and you can just paste. So now I can do greater than, and then I can come back over here. I can go to 14 day R vowel, hit copy code, and then I can hit I can just paste it in here again, um, which you can just do that with control C and control V. And then you can just add the filter, right? And I can also tag the filter, R vowel filter, and hit add filter, right? So now I created an R vowel filter, and I can also, when you see all the syntax code, you can come in here and edit it however you want. Um, with the words, you cannot really do this in a precise way that you want. For example, if I want an R vowel to start at the day, I can just change this to zero. And this is getting into more advanced. We'll, we'll get into this a little bit later about what these data points are, how to reference them, how to know what they are. That'd be in step three or method three. So, but we can just hit edit filter and, and now I've changed the, the R vowel filter to include the day that you, the day of the event that you're gonna start at. So. Let's go to edit columns. I showed you how to do that in filters and edit columns is going to be something very, very similar, right? Um, so you go to build your own words. You can see if I type in that 14, 14 day ATR, 14 day R the same thing pops up. So the custom formulas are exactly the same. What's different is you can actually just type this in and you can just get a column out of it. So you gotta make sure you put in uh, a name um, the header for the column. So this will be a uh, 14 day R vowel. So I'll just say 14 D R vowel. And now I have a column. Uh, when you, when you do that in the filters, you cannot do that because you, you have to follow the filter command. So you can't just say 14 day R vowel. See, it has to be greater than less than it has to be. It has to be some type of math operator that's going to show like we're filtering something out. So you have to use some type of math logic to filter something out. And edit columns, you can simply just ask for the data point that you want. So let's say we want a uh, time of day or something like that. So time of high of day, time of low of day, you can just click copy the code and then boom. So now you have intraday zero, nine thirty. but let's say maybe you don't even want it for that, you know, that length. Um, I think we already did one earlier where we did like the midday. So let's just say we want to do this to the morning. So I'll just say from 1030, I consider that usually like the, the morning, the opening hour. So now we can do opening hour high, or this will be opening low. So let's just, I'll just change this to max, change this to high. And now we have opening high. So as you can see so far, nothing too overly complicated, but the problem with these methods is they're very simple and they don't exactly appease to someone who's going to be looking to create their own formula. These are all kind of based off pre-made formulas from Spikey or that users have suggested. So how are you going to get into creating your own formula? Well, this is the part where things get slightly more complex, but I have a great way of approaching it. So let's move on to method three, which is copy and reference data point structure. So if we go back up to custom and we go to build your own code, you'll see that Spikey has kindly provided us with these guidelines. 
And what you can do with these guidelines is you can hit show more and then you can read through all the different guidelines and it will greatly increase your knowledge on how the syntax and the coding of the formulas is derived. But the way I like to do it is I like to reference what we call here data point structure. So these guidelines are like your Bible and this data point structure is like your 10 commandments to follow, I guess. Uh, so what I just simply do is let's say I want to build out some type of daily requirement. You can look at the data point type um, to get where you want to go. So I'm looking at daily and then I'll go over here to daily point structure. I'll copy the daily point structure and then I'll just go down and I'll paste the daily point structure in. Now you see when we paste this in, we get daily day data point adjusted value. These are all fields. Right. So these are all fields. So we go up the field. Our first field is daily. OK, so we're looking at the daily and it's just simply daily or intraday. Right. So really this one, they already inputted it for us, but it would just be kind of day. OK, so daily or intraday. And we want daily because we're trying to build out a daily bar. Next one, we have day. So what day do we want this to fall on? Right. OK, so the day that we want this to fall on is day zero, um, the day of the event. Um, or you can do negative one for the previous day or negative is going to take you back from the day of the event and positive is going to take you in front. So you can just put in one or two or three all work the same. But for this example, we'll just do five. So five days before the event. Now we're looking for the data point. All right. So we go to data point, actual data point to pull one of these open, high, low, close, volume, and number of trades. Um, there's also time here, but time is used when you're doing like intraday events, then you can request stuff like time. Um, there might be some other fields, but time is another data point that you can request. So I'll go on data point and what do we want? We want, I don't know, the volume, okay? So we're going to get the volume for five days in advance and we're going to leave it adjusted. Okay. So what we have is the volume five days after the event that we filter for. And now we're going to multiply that by the daily day data point adjusted value. We're going to multiply that by the close of the day. So the close price of the day, and that's going to give us pretty much daily dollar volume. So type in daily, put in five, type the data point will be close. And then we'll just do adjust it again. And we can call this daily dollar vowel. We can hit add to column. All right. So moving on. Let's do something more complex. We want to get the high of the pre-market. This is more complex than most of the requests you're going to have. Um, really all depends on who you are, but let's just see if the same approach works. So we have our intraday because we know we're looking for intraday uh, point and we want to get the pre-market high time of the previous day. So we'll put negative one here. Um, our start time will be four. That's when the pre-market starts, I'm pretty sure. Our end time will be 929. Because uh, the market opens at 930. Our data point will be, once again, time. So if I go to data points, you'll see time is not actually here. But you'll see, we'll get the green check mark. The value can be uh, adjusted is fine. I, I don't care. Events function. So what is events function? Events function, all intraday indicators function to apply to evaluate events data point. Uh, example of this would be um, one of these max min. So our events function is going to be the max. And going to be the high. Boom. All right. So now we're getting the prior previous pre-market high time. Um, using this formula and 
Yeah, I mean, great. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's say we want to do a daily moving average, okay? So I'll just come over here, copy the data point structure. Actually, this is a new feature, so I actually haven't used this before. So it'll be interesting to see if my logic stands up to uh, how I approach this still works with these new functions. So we have indicator here and uh, that won't change. That is the function that we're, we're using indicator. We have time frame. never seen this one before. So this is new. The time frames is daily or intraday. So it's much like all the other ones. We'll say daily. Um, the function, uh, since we're doing a moving average, I'll just type in, I want an EMA. The data point will be, you can put in any data point in here. So uh, I will do the high because I'm interested in, I'm, I'm just doing weird stuff. I'll just have a little fun experimenting. So it'll be adjusted. You want to use adjusted for pretty much anything that's multi-day um, offset. So what is offset for a moving average? So I go here and it says offset and it says number of days back to start calculation. Previous day equals one. So I want to start the calculation at the previous day. I'll just put in one. If I want to start the day, the calculation five days back, I would just put in five. I'll put in one. Let's do bar size. Um, bar size would be a whole positive number. So I'm assuming, okay, interval to pull indicator. So I want to do every one bar. So every one daily bar is what I'll pull it at. Um, and let's see here, number of bars. We want to go back 21 days. We have a slight error. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I mean, uh, everything still lines up and works. Um, I think you guys can probably take over from here and get started creating your more advanced uh, calculations and custom formulas that you want. I think that's a good showcase. Uh, I think we went over all three methods that I use, and I would be interested in seeing if anybody else had any methods that they thought were good or some tips that they picked up along the way. Um, but I think this is a good showcase, so that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, we can hit review, get the data, just open the data. So you can see um, this is our test template. And then if we go to the end, we can check out all our custom formulas. So we got the pre-market high time. And you can see it's actually giving us the time, even though um, the time data point wasn't something that was shown in there. Um, we're getting daily, daily dollar vol. The MA high, that's based on the high. So you can see we're getting those custom formulas that we want. And yeah, that's going to wrap up the video. The next video, we'll be talking about the best ways to be efficient. And that's going to start with creating a overall template for everything you need. So that'll be the next video. Peace out, guys. Spikey, the one-stop shop to edge.